so did you say I put our WhatsApp thing into a blog? Um, no. Are you, do you mean everything that you sent me on WhatsApp? You like collected it and put it into a blog? Yeah. Okay. With a little bit of it, and I found that Rory Stewart Gabriel Gatehouse um, Twitter thing. It was actually in um, 2019 about all the Brexit stuff, and they were joshing together. Well, um, as in, as in, they were tweeting together, or they were talking on TV. No, no, they were tweeting back and forth to each other. The in joke was um, something like "free the bin" or something. I'll put it on the blog. I mean, it's it's um, it's it's a you know apropos nothing, but is actually quite significant, especially oh, when thanks. you look at yeah. what what Rory is doing, his Campbell Claret stuff, and look at the recent stuff on their politics web thing which i've had a bit of a delve into uh, let's do a, a, a screen share look and let's let's just just uh have, have a quick trot through it um start sharing hold on uh, oh did i uh just want to make sure i've got the computer sound on as well uh there we are share continue because i start sharing here we go so um Let's just oh, make that bit smaller. Uh, here it is. Right. So is that up on the screen? Grub Street in Exile, 5G Ardhar, COVID-19 and AIDS Austerity Mirror World. Yeah. 15th of March, 2024. So that was the stream of consciousness that I sent you at whatever time that was this morning. Okay. Was quite early, wasn't it? So, anyway, here's the famous bin. Our business is rubbish. <laughs> right? So, Rory tweeted a picture of a large bin in Westminster and Gatehouse, and he had a Twitter exchange about it, trying to find it on, on the blog somewhere. I did eventually find it. But, uh, so, the... the it, Rory's podcast is called It's All About Politics. It used to be called It's All About Policy, right? It's, it's, called, the, it's, called, it's, it's, it's called The Rest Is Politics. Right, okay. And it used to be The Rest Is Policy. Really? Right. And, and according to Monica, he used to do it with Gabriel Gatehouse, which is may or may not be true. Uh, but the early days of that podcast are not on the web. They're, they're not even on the way back machine, Right. So there he is interviewing his friend, Yuval Noah Harari. And here's him and Campbell Claret interviewing Angela Rayner. Right. How, how Labour became electable. I mean, I, well, that, that's a moot point. OK, but that, that's further down. So here's you. Here's you. <laughs> The aim of the experiment was to detect those who did not approve of it being carried out and to take appropriate steps. Now, that's a quote from uh, the Yawning Heights, the Alexander Zinoviev um, satirical novel about the Soviet Union. Um, and this is one of my favourite recent videos of yours, you know, when you're talking about who owns Joe, whether Navarro, mm. and all of that stuff, right? Anyway, so here it is. Look, um, there's our Rory. Um, um, anyway, so hold on. You know the Rory photo. Who who put that out? What is that? Is that you? Yeah, I, I'm going to go down here. I, Remember, I, can I you just, go back to the Rory photo? Yeah, it's down here too. I'll take you oh. to the content. Here, here he is. Yeah. Look. It's Joe. It's a yeah, Joe. So believe in the bin, right? Th th that was their little joke, whatever it meant. So here's Gabriel Gatehouse. Okay. Believe in the bin, spotted near where I live, at Rory Stewart, and here's the bin. And this, it just stuck in my memory. I mean, it was May 2019. Now, let me just, 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 just let's have a think. Is this um, in the run-up to Rory Stewart's London mayor campaign? Yes, quite possibly. Okay. And then he ran later that year for the Tory leadership against Boris. And it, right. he's almost like 
the non-banking Rishi Sunak. I mean, he's a, he's actually a more likable character than Rishi Sunak, truth be known. I think. Um, I mean, he's he's not a he's not an unlikable chap, in my opinion. Um, I've never met him, so I couldn't say for sure. But you know, he he always seems all right to me. But when when he was asked by Ash Sarka about the circle of the penny, penny, right? He was quite shocked. But that's really interesting because Norman Lamont used to be the chairman of that, and it is super super underground i put another video up earlier about bill clinton mentioning carol quigley it's like a 30 minute long um thing with some different segments talking about the uh road scholarships and stuff like that and 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 um great uh greater britain not great britain but greater britain and, and all of that stuff which is very relevant i think to people like not, well, not so much Rory Stewart, because he's more with the Europeans and the Erasmus lot and the, you know, Pinney lot and the um, Charlemagne Prize and all can that I, stuff. Can I can I just chuck a couple of things in on Le Cercle? Yeah. Um, I first came across, I've never researched Le Cercle, but I first came across Le Cercle when I was looking at NHS privatisation. And I noticed that the guy, there's a guy who I think he's possibly from New Zealand and he used to do like, he was kind of did stuff with Reagan and Thatcher and think tanks on the economic side and the economist and people like that. But also he was doing the whole Cold War thing and his name was Brian Crozier. Oh, I remember him, yeah. And Brian Crozier, he was part of Le Cercle, I believe. And that was very much, very similar to what's happening now in that it's just like very scared of anything even slightly left. You know, they've identified globally every kind of leftist movement. And then I guess they either infiltrate or destroy from outside or something like that. But either way, they name them all. And they get on with it. So that's what one thing I noticed about a uh, Le Cercle guy. The other thing is that um, one of the contemporary Le Cercle people, I think I had clocked that Stuart was in it, but is also Nadim Zahawi. He's definitely been, I yes. think he was, he might have been the chair for yes, a few yeah, years. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I seem to recall that. Yeah. yeah, and I think that would be on Wikispooks or Powerbase or that type mm -hmm. of thing. I'm pretty sure that would be written there. Mm. Um, now, I, yeah. I think it's relevant. I think it's very relevant. Um, you know, I said I was going to just have a quick look at Dominic Cummins because I, I started off looking at Dominic Cummings. Yeah, he's in the news again today. Yeah. Is he? Mm. Oh, right. So what, what's he up to? He's in the news today because uh, and, and obviously once I've said this and I'll be quick. Please, let's go back to the reason why you're talking mm -hmm. about Dominic Cummings. Uh, hold on a second. What, what's, what, Catherine? What you want to say? Yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah. I think Cummings was in the news because um, I think maybe, what's his name? Maybe Rory Stewart interviewed... Um, he hasn't Sajid. interviewed Cummings because I looked. I was hoping no, I'd find I think, that. I think Rory Stewart might have interviewed Sajid Javed. He did. He did. Yeah, and in that, he talks about being uh, being kicked out. Yeah, and what he says, he was hoping he could de-radicalise Chris t um, uh, Liz Truss. Yeah, but before that... Moderate her, I think. But before said. that, I mean, again, I only saw a clip, so I can't be chronological, but he talked about when he was ejected, you know, when, when he was replaced by Rishi Sunak as Chancellor. So there it is very clear that um, Dominic Cummings always intended to replace uh, Sajid Javed with uh, Rishi Sunak. And just to say this, if that's the case, then obviously there's like, like the whole Dominic Cummings global government thing. But also um, Dominic Cummings is married to the like one of the deputy editors of The Spectator. And obviously, that's where James Forsyth is. Forsyth, who had Sunak. Who's her father? He, he's some eugenicist 
Arista, isn't he? I think. Yeah. Again. Yeah. And he got COVID money and all of this kind of stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, but just to say that that whole spectator circle, um, that's that Cummings is part of that. And that provides, you know, like very, yeah. very close to Rishi Sunak. So right now on that. So I think Cummings is, I think Cummings is dodgy as fuck and has no redeeming features. I, I, yes. I, 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 I'm open to persuasion on that point. The, the, well, the, I, I hope so. Cause you've yeah. been, you've been, it's been a long time, but, <laughs> but yeah. But is Cummings a wig is what I want to do. Cause, cause um, it's undoubted in my mind that, 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 um, Sunak is a wig. I mean, we are in the midst of the new wig junto. We absolutely sure. are. Okay. And, and, uh, all the way down to the Fox bill for the East India Company presented to the which, but you know, that the, um, this is later on, but, 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 but the one which, um, Edmund Burke criticized. Um, all this is, all this stuff is in my recent blogs, but, but the making of the Bank of England and what happened constitutionally then, because obviously you had the restoration, the Whig Junto, um, the uh, the formation of the Bank of England, and then you had a big falling out and a lot of reform that went on in in Burke's time, which is in the late eighteenth century, so the seventeen nineties or so, right? Which is the peak of the pamphleteering age, right? Grub Street Journal and Grub Street in Exile. I mean, the the four pamphleteers ride again. I mean, it's just uh, the 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 it, it's we're absolutely there in terms of what they're doing to the money system. Even down to on Bank Underground, the Bank of England blog last week, there was a blog came out, a guy talking about talking about digital currencies, new money taking over from money that isn't working anymore, right? Which which goes right back to the formation of the Bank of England and all the rest of it. Right. I mean bear with me, it, it's absolutely relevant to this charge I'm making about um, Sunak, he's a Whig. Now, someone else who used to call themselves a Whig, OK, I'm not sure how well he knew what it what it meant, was Dellingpole. Dellingpole was a self-described Whig, right? Now, the, the Tories and the Whigs didn't used to get on. The Tory party, OK, was more merchants and free market people, whereas the Whigs are free trade people. And well, basically, what passed for globalists back in those days, which was basically uh, yeah, imperialism through mercantilism through the East India Company, right? And this is all historical. I mean, all this stuff is that you can stand any of this up historically. Uh, in fact, Carol Quigley does in Tragedy and Hope and in the Anglo American establishment, right? So, okay, but hold on, hold on. In terms of this conversation, we're going down your blog. Um, you've mentioned Rory Stewart. You're mentioning, I mentioned the Sajid Javed thing. We mentioned the Cirque, and now you're talking about Cummings. And mm. I know that you are generally generous to Cummings, but the point that we are at at the moment is saying, uh, can we diagnose people? And can we, you know, you know if we were to do so, then would this guy be more this or that, which is an interesting model to adopt. And that's where we are. Look, Cummings is very clear in saying what he doesn't want. OK, and what is, doesn't work and what he's critical of. OK, so we're critical of the system and the parts of the system that we can clearly see aren't working. Right. But we want what we want and what he wants seem to be two different things. OK. Uh, the same with Rory Stewart. Now, any friend of Nouvel Harari's, or whatever he's called, is not likely to be a friend of mine. But uh, yeah, so let's carry on with the blog because that, that's the structure to this conversation, and you can make any point that you like yeah, through there because so, that's so, what you've so done. So anyway, thinking. what I did earlier was was five G. Okay, so Francis Leader has done. A, fantastic series on the harms of electromagnetic um, radiation uh, and so forth. That's something I, 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 I've been interested in for a long time. I've been very interested in the link between childhood leukemia and high tension electricity 
cables, right? Um, 5G is one of the huge taboos, okay? And I think Francis is right. I, I, I think that a lot of the health problems that are put down to COVID and COVID jabs are actually to do with the stepped up radiation from 5G. I, I, I absolutely do. I think, and I think that that has been stood up scientifically, uh, but because the regulation of that industry is captured, um, there's an excellent blog from 2019, which is also in this blog, we'll, we'll get to it, which explains how, how that all works. Okay. 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 So anyway, 5G, then Ardha, COVID-19, AIDS and austerity. Okay. Well, how can they possibly connect it? Well, they are. And I've put them into the mind map. And if you go in the mind map, you can see with those nodes, different things that connect to them. Um, connect, people, people make different connections. Anyway, here's Sajid David. This is one of the things I've got directly challenged about compulsory vaccination. NH doctor tells health sector you won't get jabbed. Remember that? Yeah. Right. For me, that was the breaking, the final. It wasn't even a straw, but it broke the camel's back. It broke that narrative. It was on live TV. Now, AIDS is very interesting in, in, in relation to the COVID-19 jabs. Um, it's also incredibly interested in terms to where did it come from and the book, The River and all that. So there are quite a few links to AIDS stuff um, on the mind map. Uh, which is there. Austerity then. Uh, now, austerity is the banker's preferred way of, of, of managing an economy. You know, um, the, the, the austerity and, 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 and central banking go hand in hand. OK, we can leave that at that without getting too deeply into it. So well, is, is what you mean when you say that, that basically bankers prefer austerity to inflation? Well, they prefer austerity and deflation, and deflation yeah. is yeah. inherently, by definition, austere. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, and um, so this is about the money system. So it goes back to the Whig junto bringing in the Bank of England. What is that system? So, anyway, Hooper's book, The River. Now, David recommended this to me because I, at the beginning of COVID, I rang David up and I sort of said, "Look, this reminds me of when AIDS came in." you know all the everything all, all the you know the in, induced panic the tombstone abs all that I, I got a community strike for actually putting that tombstone ad up as part of a video on, on youtube well so because I, you I, I because you because because during a panic you pointed at another panic is that why well no i pointed out the fact that um well <laughs> That, 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 that it was obviously very similar and you got shit you know, for it what, whatever it was i mean they said it was violence because i it had clippings as well of the um i am the slime uh, track by uh frank zappa frank zappa yeah oh yeah. good good for you roger i didn't know that you were the sort of person that would use a frank zappa track good for you Oh, always, no, I, always, I, I love always, don't, don't, um, love don't eat yellow snow as well. I use that quite often when I'm arguing with climate alarmists and catastrophists. It, these are these are some of my favourite tracks, honestly. Yeah, Nanook, Nanook the Eskimo. Exactly. I am <laughs> the slime on the video yeah. <laughs> on the living room floor. Yeah, well, the, the video that I got the community strike for is on the BitChute channel. So it, you know, I because I. Okay. But anyway, I digress. So I asked you, how's Bob Gill doing? Because the NHS should be a big thing in the next election. When is the next election going to be? Is it going to be in the autumn? Is it going to be next spring? Is he going to call a snap election? Are they going to elbow Rishi out the way? Because they, they've been outed as Whigs. And There's the been Whigs a lot of talk. Of, gonna win. There's been a lot of talk of Rishi going. I think, what's his name? Uh, Tim Montgomery was on Times Radio saying he's a lovely man, Rishi Sunak, but he can't do politics. And then there's the other woman called Kate McCann, uh, who's very mixed up with uh, the, you know, like Zionist anti-Corbyn people. But anyway, just a standard UK journalist. And she also has said that they're all saying, well, not that they're all saying, but many people are saying 
maybe we should go into the election with a different leader. Yeah. So anyway, here's the meat of it here then. How's well then? Is Cummings getting anywhere? Who is he itching his wagging, wagon to? Interesting, you said he's in the news today. Rory and the circle of Dupini, is he a Conservative? Will Rishi get the chop? Well, I think Rory's a Whig. I think Rishi's a Whig. I also think Cummings is a Whig. Um, or, or Cummings may just be a neoliberal because there, there, there are neoconservatives, neoliberals, Whigs. Whigs aren't conservatives. Are they Tories? It, do you know what I mean? I mean, it, they evolve. Yeah, but can I just give you, I mean, like, this is all great, but obviously uh, I think it's deeply simplistic to come out with this stuff, but like, I like it. Uh, it's fun. Um, where would you place, and obviously people have different incarnations, but where would you place a deep pragmatist and totally untrustworthy on all levels individual like Michael Gove? Have you got a label? Or Because for me, uh, well, Gove uh, uh, and uh, Cummings... Liberal, isn't it? Liberal. <laughs> liberal, <laughs> Gove, liberal. Okay, <laughs> well, I mean, to be honest, what is the difference between Gove and Cummings? I mean, they've definitely worked together well, on many occasions. Well, he's advisor as well, obviously. Yeah, so, I mean, what is the difference? Whatever label you I, give well, Gove... Well, there, there you I go, don't it's think... an interesting question. I, I don't know the answer, but what I do know is that um, the... There are factions in banking. There's obviously the central banking faction and the monopoly international banking faction, what used to be merchant banks. Um, and then there are smaller banks and community banks and the mutual banks and used to be more building societies than there are now, but mutual societies. Well, they're not all the same thing, um, but the factions of international banking and central banking are, are quite well aligned. But then it breaks down into um, primary resources. So perhaps Cummings is aligned more to oil, which would be the Koch brothers. Or is it the Mercers who are more money? And I think it's the Mercers and they're more money and media. Well, he definitely I mean, you obviously have seen more of Cummings than I have. But I remember in one of the documentaries, he basically said, yeah, I was unemployed. I was no longer at the home office. So I decided around 2014, 15 to make a few calls and stuff like that. And there's a bit where he said, yeah, so I started taking calls from billionaires. Do you remember that? He basically said, I started taking calls from billionaires. So that Which would ones? be. Uh, I think that's for us to guess. Well, but... Mercer obviously is one of them, and that would be my big guess. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he made it sound like it was plural and, you know, maybe they were the direct calls, maybe they were the intermediaries. But for him, it was just a completely normal thing to just say I was taking money from billionaires. And at no point does he make it sound as though he was taking it from like the Duke of Westminster or, you know, oh, whoever cool. owns or, or whoever owns a British company. You know, it, it, you know, he didn't make it sound the as though spoke. it was. I didn't think it was from James Dyson. I thought it was. Mm. If, yeah, it, yeah, might be, I, it might be Ratcliffe, though, the Ineos man. Yeah, but yeah, exa oh, that, yeah, there's, yeah, exactly. So I don't know who he was taking the calls off. Lex Greensill. Oh, I he, doubt that very much. I mean, he, he went up and down <laughs> very quickly, didn't he? Yeah. I doubt very much that it was Lex Greensill, yeah. but yeah. So anyway, so my next sentence then is Corbyn David Davis, Unity Government. Now, um, where does Galloway fit into all of this? What? happened in Rochdale. I think the most significant thing about Rochdale for me was that it, the, the, the second place independent romped home by a country mile past the Tories and the um, Labour. Yeah. And, and Galloway in all of this, um, I, I, yeah, I'm not sure about him. Well, I mean, yeah, no, obviously Galloway is a bit of a funny one. I think I think that it's fairly safe to say that that is an example of something that just cannot be described as having followed the script. Right. Well, there are a couple of videos coming up. Rory features in one of them and Galloway in the other uh, speaking on opposite sides of a debate 10 years apart at the Oxford Union. Uh, this may seem like idle gossip or whatever, but it's not. I think it's really relevant because the the narrative is on repeat. 
it's worse than watching Dave on television. You know, it's just different actors playing. So, so, so what did so what did Rory say ten years apart from Galloway? Uh, well, Rory was speaking I uh, in favour of I'll die for Queen and Country, and Galloway was speaking not to die for King and Country. Right, right, um, and the. A, a guy called Ben Griffin spoke against the motion 10 years ago. Brilliant speech. And he was actually at the Brexit vote night thing at the Ecuadorian embassy where, where David Graeber was there, Julian Assange, the whole bit. Ben Griffin was actually there that night. So Ben, ben, ben Griffin, is he the guy that you said is ex-SAS? Yes, yeah. And anyway. so he was saying, bad idea. Oh, I, it just, um, uh, I, I know lots of ex-soldiers and military people. And, uh, you know, it's not, not usually your foot soldiers are in fate, you know, want to be rushing off to war. You know, they'll ask people to get call for, you know, it's, it, it, it's the tossers like Grant Shapps that think it's all a jolly good show. Fuck him. So, anyway. Okay, okay, so Galloway and Stuart. So Stuart is saying... They, they were ten years apart, but Rory Stuart, Stuart, Stuart was, was Mal, saying from Mal the top of the Rifkin from the top of the motion from the top sure. of the military. Stuart was saying we need people wanting to die for England. Yeah. And did he do a good performance? Uh, well, I, I I didn't think particularly. I mean, I I suppose you know people that are into that sort of schoolboy debating society and all that. I mean, they all. You know, I mean, I, I, the Oxford Union, I, I, I like listening to some of the c controversial speakers. I think Cambridge is better. Their, their union I prefer. But at the same time, um, they're all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's. Yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. It is what. But, but, you know, you get some idea of what these twats are really about when, when you tune in. In a way. So anyway. Um, Okay, so that's Richard Stallman, and this was in 2012 an RT talking about free software. It's very, very re relevant what's happening on the internet and what Richard was saying back then. Uh, right, um, that's my interactive PDF that people download, and the link down here is actually all the fines that've been paid by all the big banks. Um, further on, there's your interview with David Malone when he was running for Green Party leader, talking about money laundering and all the rest of it. So this this chart I've done, th this has actually been vandalised in Google, not by me, or the link has been fucked with several times. I've got backups and all the rest of it. Uh, it, it can be downloaded and, and, and looked at, but, you know, um, it, it's explosive stuff, shall we say, and it's all... You know, basically, it's all misdoings and misdeeds of banks that can be stood up and the evidence is all there for everyone to see. Uh, going old school, going offline, I'm basically saying, you know, the Internet is totally in shitified at this point. And um, you know, I'm a businessman. And uh, if, if you want to do business in this country now, you've got to get the hell away from the monopolists, from the East India Company, from from the Whigs. Right. Um, is Richard Groves an article from 2006? Uh, he he was one of the original 9/11 whistle whistleblowers. Marshall McLennan were one of his clients. He, he's a computer bloke uh, and blew the whistle on insider trading before 9/11. And I'm saying there was insider dealing before COVID too. Lots. But of you it. you are you are either proving or pointing at something with these links so what are you proving or pointing at what i'm pointing at is that the the cat is out of the bag right all of these facts right that might get ascribed to conspiracy theory i'll show you something now in a minute about that right aren't conspiracy theories they are proven empirical facts right lots of the counter arguments put against them are falsified Right. It's public knowledge now. And so the enemy, which is the people that want to take your liberty and keep you poor, are in full view. Right. And they're Rory Stewart. They're Campbell Claret. 
they're um, Dominic Cummings, right? Now, these are all people who have been in the shadows. Now, Cummings and, 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 and uh, Cabinet Office man Mark Sedwell, obviously they didn't get on. So there are clearly different factions here, but these these people in the shadows, OK, the power behind the throne or whatever, um, they're all out in the open right now. And th the question we need to ask is, what exactly is it you're arguing for then? What, why isn't it being put to a vote? But can, I, can I just quickly say this? Mm -hmm. uh, I think all of these people are massive suckers of corporate cock. And that's, you know, they're almost it's as in many it, cases, literally. They, they <laughs> see that. Yeah, exactly. The greasy pole. And they're all they it feels to me that they're all vying with each other for being the, you know, the gatekeeper mm. um, and centralizing as much power within their own little gatekeeper hands to to be that person. So I think a lot of it is likely to be just standard Machiavellian backstabbing with absolutely no ideology at all uh, well yes and no and um does it really matter it's the actions that actually get acted upon that affect other people what why people are doing it or why, what they believe in why they're doing it i think is a distraction that can basically take the target off the back of the people that we need to aim our 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 intellectual arguments against. OK, so what, so what, but what are you answer, saying, though? Because I was I was saying it's just no one knows about it. But I was saying they're all cunts and they're all basically just trying to get rid of one person in order to be able to get be, you know, like the, the kingmaker of the throne and stuff like that. You well, said I, I, I you, you said the, yes and no, Roger. That's you part said, of it. And that's kind of the entertaining bit. Right. But actually, yeah. when the chips are down, OK, and 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 and, and hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just want to say they this. stop fighting each other, and 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 they fight us. Yeah, but and Roger, they're back against the wall right now. So yeah, that's I just, a distraction, in my opinion. Yeah, but what what I'm asking is this, right? Is there's these people? They're doing this stuff. The question that I'm kind of asking is, do they have? Is it just literally everyone stabbing each other in the back to get ahead, or is there any remote? ideology or any uh tribal thing that's going there's definitely tribalism going on there's definitely loyalties and shit like that what the fuck is going on is there loyalties are there factions what are no, they kind of looking they're, for? They're, they're, their main ideological thing that binds them together is elitism and elitism takes several forms okay now um and they are elitists and they don't they, they don't think it's anybody else's business right now okay within so where are we now? circles there there are different there are different things that they all put their their masks to kind of depending where they come from what their background is blah 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 what their perversions are all, all this sort of thing and a lot of that stuff is very unpleasant um but again it distracts from the pitch battle, which now needs to take place, okay? Okay. Outside of the unshittified internet, okay? And um, all their fairy state stories have been exposed, right? They they can't re they can't reframe all of their fairy stories. This is why their narratives are broken down so badly, okay? They they I, I put it this way the other week, didn't I? Is that um, the broken laces on their jack boots have been snapped so many times that they haven't got enough material left to tie a bow on their stories anymore. And they're stamping, they're, they're busily still trying to stamp on our faces like, like in 1984. Okay, so, so I can agree with you in many ways, I'm sure, that Rochdale was not supposed to happen the way it did. Uh, that was a massive fuck up because that should have just been a Labour win. Uh, for whatever reason, that fucked up. Then two Fridays ago, so not last week, but the week before. I think even if Labour had got their hand, got got their act together, George Galloway may still have won. Okay, uh, that's a very good point. Um, and 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 they have to kind of like try and deal with that world in which that type of thing can happen. And that's why two weeks ago, everyone... well, what they've got to deal with, Ranjan, is a world with brown people in it. <laughs> And they're not very good at that. 
are they? You know that as well as I do. Well, I think... Come on, be fair. I mean, it is true, isn't it? Well, of course. And I think that um, what I was going to say was that two weeks ago was their effort at cobbling something together yeah. by saying 4.30 p.m., Rishi's going to speak. Oh, yeah, extremism. You know, Jews don't feel comfortable. I, I, it wasn't him that said that there are no-go areas, but, you know, he may as well have said it. And well, it was kind of like... David we, we Baddiel could... said that that kind of talk is not helpful. One of the few times that David Baddiel has said something political that I'm kind of not arguing with. Yeah. Um, like I mean, that's that's completely true, isn't it? And like, thank yeah. fuck, he said it. Uh, he said it was inflammatory, didn't he? Yeah. Um, and, and it's meant to be. It's meant to be. Yeah. So that's interesting, isn't it? Where David Baddiel is basically saying, "You are, you know, I've sold my book. Jews don't count. You know, well done me." But it's interesting, actually, also that of course Baddiel and Gove are both Murdoch, you know, affiliated. Mm -hmm. And so to see Padil come out and say, this is going too far, you can't fucking do this. Yeah, well, you know, they went actually... way, way too far with all that Nasher Jew stuff as well. And you remember that they had to go. Well, yeah, no, Nasher but I'm not Jew. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about right now when um, it's one thing for them to be on the attack against Corbyn, you know, which is terrible. Yeah. But then but then what they did recently, which is where they've just gone Basically, think about it from Badil's point of view, yeah, which is not something that I like to do. But can you imagine, like, I've had a couple of sort of messages with people who are probably never going to meet me, but, you know, I know them, who basically said, oh, I think David Badil said it best, you know, because, you know, these are Jewish friends, and they say, oh, David Badil said it best, and I just go, okay, whatever. But can you imagine how many people who identify as being Jewish would have some contact with David Badil quite regularly online? There must be loads. And I wonder how many of them have basically said, why is why are we being told that there are no go areas for us? Why it's one thing for us to feel uncomfortable, but no go area is basically that's yeah. like at the point of telling us to leave. Yeah. I mean I, I That's not clever. That's that's bad. Uh, well, I so, think Badil is right to have said what he said. I'd like to hear what David Aronovich has got to say about it as well, because I can't think he'd be too chuffed either. And you know I've got a big soft spot for him. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Well, he's he's good and bad, isn't he? I mean, he hates Farage, doesn't he? But anyway, um, I think that anyway. So two weeks ago, they do this thing, and then bit by bit, what's his name, Lee Anderson leaves. Uh, there's other big stories, but in the in terms of them trying to, what is it? They call it the grid, don't they? To try and control the news cycle. Um, that's yeah. when. Yeah. On Monday, they they they've since Monday, that all they've done is basically just go extremism, 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 mm. and um, that's causing problems, isn't it? Yeah. So anyway, LinkedIn, but that is but that but that is that is part of your li it's, learning it's, to live in a world with brown it's, people. In. It's look, it it's a big picture. There's a lot has been going on, although not in the news cycle at the moment. Okay. Um, and the job of trying to pull that together in a mise-en-scene sort of thing, you know, a, a, or like a... Yeah, a storytelling. Mural. Yeah. Um, that, that's what I've been trying to do the last yeah. month, right? Uh, this film is brilliant, this Monopoly film by Tim Geelan. Um, so here we are. I keep six... Honest serving men, they taught me all I know. Their names are what and why and when and how and where and who. That's Kipling. Um, I, and, and there are answers to all of those questions now, right? And keeping keeping a, 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 a good grip on the verifiable, proven facts is how we win this. The, the, the way that we get divided, the, the, when the rock in the pond goes in, OK, th this is where, you know, no go areas comes in to, to you know, basically to, to stop our Jewish brothers and sisters from joining us all. Because it's the common e enemy is, is the Whig Junto in the UK and it, it's it actually Whigs. Um, in, in, in the United States as well. I did an article about United States politics going back to the when Walter, um, oh, what was he called? Um, 
Burin, Arnold Burin, and the other guy, they had a duel. They shot each other. Hamilton, yeah. it was. Yeah. Hamilton. So Ham- I mean, Hamilton was, a was shot made about by... Hamilton trying to redo, but Hamilton was for the banking monopoly. He was yeah, Hamilton was shot West by the vice East president. Man. Yeah. Pardon? He was he was shot and killed by the then vice president of America. Yeah. Who set up Chase Manhattan or one of the other one of the other banks? Yeah. Yeah. All, all, so it, it, it's it's all this is all relevant to to now, right? And and um, uh, the the more esoteric stuff. Okay. Okay. Whilst much of it is true, it serves as a very good distraction to actually getting to the nuts and bolts and basically turning the tap of this. This, this 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 fraudulent wickedness off, you know. So the hands on the levers of power, right? Yeah, we the machine has more or less broken down itself, but it's it's us that's got to fix it, and we fix it by pooling our knowledge of fixing these things, and it's it's the things that it's the things that bind us together that allow us to fix things, not 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 the things that actually get it stand us apart but if 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 you're um a manipulative um power base that that wants to divide and rule you know all the tricks in the book to stop people from putting their expertise together and their knowledge together to do something positive yeah that's what's happening that's Mm. for sure i agree with you on that completely yeah uh, so, I mean, that's it, really. I mean, the blog all sort of, I mean, it all flow. I mean, I, you know, we talked about Pete North and Richard um, Richard North. And I sort of said about his appearance before the Brexit committee, which was really funny. Um, and, and Pete North bitching about all oh, Cummings. He's not a real expert and everybody wants to hear him, but no one wants to listen to my dad, who's a real expert, all that stuff. Do you remember that? Uh, no, um, but you told me about it. Yeah, and look, it's it's all in the blog, sort of r- running down. Uh, sneak peek, solution to big tyranny. Um, free trade's not the same as free market. I, I put that um, Lane Hartsell stuff in. Um, in the oh, Korean you know, Times, Bill Gates the, and he, he interviews. Yeah, so. Uh, so anyway, the, this is the top ten. The top ten posts by views on my Substack comes out more or less as the way I would describe the narrative, in terms of, you know, what isn't talked about enough. Five G hasn't made it up the list yet, but it's at the very top at this this blog. I, I think Francis's work on five G is incredibly important and absolutely spot on. Um, so. There's Walter Burian. We're all precogs. I mean, it's all. I mean, it's all. It's all explained. It's not necessarily self-explanatory. Um, and here's Rory Stewart. So here it is. We will fight for Queen and Country, right? There's Ben Griffin, and I've got that picture on a thing I did about uh, military-industrial complex, uh, oil, gas, um, and mining, and 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 and. Um, finance, insurance, real estate, which are the three yeah. prongs of the oligarchy, according to Michael Hudson in Super Imperialism. Uh, and there's gorgeous George. Um, we should not fight for king and country. I, 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 when I saw that, I couldn't believe it. it oh, so it's very ago. recent. The Galloway one is very recent. Yeah, it was a year. It was bef- before Rochdale. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Galloway BR. Yeah, um so and then the large bin stuff, that's a very good video I made uh, about neoliberalism. It, it is a really good video. And that, that's actually uh, from Chauncey Gardner being there, the Peter Sellers oh, oh, film. Oh, oh, by the way, carry on. When you're finished, I will actually have to tell you something that happened this mm-hmm. week. OK. Anyway, that's that's basically it. And, and this one is very, very good. It's one of the best blogs I've ever done. Uh, on the cause of these present discontents uh, uh, and all credit to uh, all credit to um, Edmund Burke. You know, it's all in there. Gollum, I've spoke to be speaking to David today. This is from 2019. It's not Brexit, but Deutsche you want to worry about. 
there's your interview with him on real media uh, mm. the specific, was a case called the Mag very good Men mentioning the maginsky case <laughs> there's you and me this was a good talk we did this was in august 2022 okay um and the slog was very good yesterday that, that i interviewed john before the uh last election in 2019 so there's you there's David, there's John, and there's me as the four pamphleteers. You see? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bam. Anyway, so, I mean, that's me over and out. Roger over and out. I, I, I've got some houses to build. I, I, the rubber's really hitting the hitting the road now. I, I, Good. Uh, Finally. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I've figured out how to get it done, and now I'm just going to get on and do it. So, happy days. Um, one thing I just wanted to mention this week, I went to the final installment of something. It was a project called Last Movies by someone called Stanley Stinter. And what he's done is he's written a book about the last movies that people saw before they died. And what he says is the more famous you are, the more likely it is that we know what your last film was. Uh, and in the case of some people, they actually died in the cinema. Um, so on the 22nd of November, it was the 60th anniversary of JFK. So what he decided to do was to screen from Russia with love because apparently JFK was a big Ian Fleming fan. And he also, before that, screened this film at the cinema that Lee Harvey Oswald saw when he got arrested uh, that, that night. Um, I went to a couple of other screenings, but on... Tuesday or Wednesday there was no, I think it was on Tuesday anyway uh, one of these nights there was um, a screening that he did and what he does is he shows something short so sometimes at the beginning of a film or a short film and then he shows a full long film what he showed on the last night I don't think it was Ramadan related like I don't think it's because it was Ramadan that he chose it like this might have been but I don't think it was Either way, the last screening he did was he once, this is Stanley Stinter who writes about movies, he once met somebody who was a Swedish audio kind of guy, someone who was kind of obsessed with sound recordings. And this guy, Swedish gentleman, with a friend, managed to get permission, I believe in 1985, something like that, to go to... You know, have you ever read any Robert Anton Wilson? You're familiar with his work anyway, yeah, mm. and and his aspects of his legacy. So there is that, there's this famous letter that was written to Playboy magazine, probably written by Robert Anton Wilson because he was the letters editor of Playboy magazine, in which somebody says, what the fuck is going on? Um, and they refer in the in that letter to some sort of Persian... Um, power in the 12th century or something like that and they say that that set of people are the etymological root of both the word hashish and the term assassin mm -hmm. um, so that's referenced in that 1960 something letter to playboy magazine i actually have a copy of it somewhere mm -hmm. uh, but regardless that was an influential thing that was kind of true and false at the same time um, Stanley Stinter met someone who was Swedish and basically said that in 1985 or six, he and a friend got permission from the Islamic uh, government of Iran, Ayatollah, etc., to visit Iran and go to that place. Uh -huh. And they did it supposedly on the basis that they were researching aspects of Islam, which is not true. They uh -huh. were basically interested in that for reasons that you can guess, you know. It's fascinating that this is supposedly a, a place where, but I think one of the ideas are that the assassins and this guy who ran that place, apparently there were aspects of the way they did things that they could put ideas into people's heads. This is kind of mind control and that they could kind of hypnotize people into doing assassinations and stuff like that. Uh -huh. um, another kind of weird thing was that earlier on that day, I'd gone to a charity shop and I bought a book on JFK, uh, which was a photo book, which was quite interesting, uh, that had something 
um, to do with alternative footage on that day. Somebody had an epileptic fit. This is kind of like Umbrella Man type thing. So, so on the day, someone had an epileptic fit uh, in six minutes before the motorcade went past. Uh-huh. And a guy whose name apparently was Chuck Norris uh, or, or possibly Chuck Bronson. I can't remember. Anyway, a very similar name to people that we've heard of. Somebody with that name is in Dallas and they have a camera and they chose to film the epilepsy fit because they thought that was interesting. And it just so happened that just behind the epilepsy fit was the sixth floor of the book depository. So I I don't know at what point, whether it was 20 or 30 years Uh later, you know, words going around for the assassinations committee and stuff like that. Somehow they find that out and they use that as a way of identifying like what had happened. Um, Anyway, um, I picked that book up and a couple and something else. But either way, I I picked up the Borges book, Garden of Forking Paths, which is a very interesting, like 15 pages. But it's all about a Chinese guy living in England who wants to impress German intelligence and therefore goes and assassinates a Sinologist whose name is the same name as a town that he has information is going to be bombed by the Brits uh, or something like that is about to be taken over by the Brits. So the whole thing was uh, uh, a way of him getting some information to the Germans, him assassinating this Sinologist. So um that was all quite interesting for me because then i found out that stanley's event was happening and i see the film so stanley interviewed the guy who made the film in Uh iran of him going to the assassin hashish place uh and that was crazy i filmed some of it from the back of the room i asked if i could and i did Uh um but what the swedish guy said was that um he hated olaf palmer right The, the filmmaker he said, I hated Olaf Palmer. And we all did. We, us radicals on the left, we just hated him. And then he said, anyway, when I got back from that hashish place and I got back down, some Iranians told us how sorry they were to have heard that Olaf Palmer had been assassinated. Uh-huh. Um, because apparently Olaf Palmer was participating in doing a deal between Iraq and Iran uh-huh. to slow everything down. Um, then I, um, yeah, so then Stanley contacted this guy to ask if he could screen the film for this part of the last movies project at the ICA. Stanley then also told a story about how he contacted the woman who made the last film that Olaf Palmer ever watched. Okay. Uh, and it is, so I think if, um, Johanna has not already seen it, I suspect she might have. Yeah, strongly. But if she has not already seen it, well, may I just... Paddy North or whatever he's called. I saw he was interviewed by someone the other day. I haven't watched it yet. Who? Two, Oliver two North. Raven films. He, he made a film about who killed Olof Palmer, which is very, very good. And, and he, he made another film about Sweden called Dying to be Multicultural. He's half Swedish. He, he used What's to write the Times. Um, Pele Northrup... Palmer or something. He's half English, half Swedish. Very, very, very interesting guy. Um, but you know, blackballed and generally considered to be a bad lot over here and over there. I assume. Yeah. Well, well, well thank you. What I wanted Two to Ravens say. Two Ravens Films is called. Sorry. Two Ravens Films. Okay. Film company. Yeah. Because because what I wanted to say was I spoke to Stanley before the event to get permission to film some of it, um, and then I watched the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like I didn't want to watch the film. If the film comes on, I was like, OK, I gave it a chance. I ended up watching it. It's a really long film. But what came out was that Stanley contacted the filmmaker who made the last film that Olaf Palmer ever watched and said, will you be interviewed by me on Zoom as part of this thing? Mm-hmm. Because you made the last film. Uh, and she said, absolutely not. I have never traded off the fact that mm-hmm. this was the last film that he ever watched. But listen to this. But listen to this. Um, he then said, Stanley then said that the woman who who directed that film also uh, made it very clear that she absolutely hated Olaf Palmer. And, and and listen to this. She said that she wanted Olaf Palmer to be in the movie. Also, the main character in the film is called. It has got the same name. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, Ranjan, I'm I, I, I'm being polite listening, but I'm, 
you know, I, I, I film buff. I mean, it, it, that kind of trivia, I just don't, you know, it's not floating my boat, mate. I can tell you that much. <laughs> no, no the, the whole the whole point is that the last film that Olaf Palmer ever went to see, the main character in the film ha- was was supposed to be him. He was supposed yeah. to be the, well, the main guy. Yeah. So, <laughs> is it a joke? I mean, is there a punchline? I mean, it's like, well, yeah. well, no. It's just that it's just that basically it was just all quite interesting that this other guy had gone to Iran where he had literally gone to see the, the assassin thing. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I, maybe I just don't, uh, maybe I just don't get it, but I mean, I kind of think, well, all right, fair enough, but it's not, I, I d- doesn't, to me, it doesn't really mean anything, it doesn't tell me anything, I, I mean, Olaf Palmer's assassination is intensely interesting, and I've read several books about it. Um, but that's why I'm telling you. Yeah, well, the last film he watched or whatever. I mean, it is in the Pelly North. I don't remember. I, I think it's the sort. It, I don't think it's key to unlocking the. You know, he, cer- he certainly wasn't assassinated for going to watch that film or for not appearing in it or whatever. I mean, it, just see what I mean. It's to me, that's. I. It's like well. OK, but I'm, it, it's not it's not telling me anything. It's the sort of distraction that distracts from what we were, were talking about. Now, I'm not saying people shouldn't, you know, have other interests and think things are interesting. But to me, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's not I, I, I just don't see what it adds to anything, really. Doesn't make mm. the film any better. Doesn't make me want to go and see the film. I, you know, same with the thing in Iran and all the rest of it. I was, I, there was a documentary that came up the other day, and I've seen it lots of times about the great big party that the Shah threw in 1972, cost an absolute fortune. And some people say that was the beginning of the end for him being overthrown. But I, again, right now in the here and now, you know. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's yeah. I, I, it, it's um. Well, okay. I, okay. I, I, I did watch your interview with the people talking about the Oscars. I did watch a bit of that. Like, I've got to go. My dinner's on the table, and I'm a bit tired. So um, okay. Yeah, but uh, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> and. Uh, I, I, I'll I'll give you a buzz later or over the weekend. I, I will be up in London, not too distant. We can go and have a pint. Cheers, Ranger. Okay, take, take care. care. Thanks again. Bye. Bye. Bye.